everyone, and welcome to this edition of Energy Quick Chat, where we rub minds with stakeholders and players in the energy market. I am your show host, Justina Okechukwu. The African Energy Chamber has predicted that coal usage in South Africa will decline to 65% by 2030 from the current 80%, while renewable energy sources like solar PV, solar thermal, onshore wind, hydro, and bioenergy will likely account for 25% of total power generated. The Chamber's 2023 outlook on South African energy also gives an analysis of the country's natural gas market and identifies key trends across the exploration and production industries. The report not only provides a detailed overview of the country's energy sector, but gives an, a roadmap of, uh, to how South Africa can address its crippling power crisis. To drill down on this report by the AEC is my guest, Vena Ayukegba, who is the Senior Vice President at the African Energy Chamber. Thank you for joining us on the show, sir. So now let's drill down quickly. What are the key findings of your latest report on the state of South African energy? The report shows that there is significant amount of loss in economic growth if at all South Africa continues to experience the kinds of blackouts that we are seeing. A second thing about the report is that we need significant amounts of public as well as private investment, both internal investment and also external investment into the energy space in South Africa to be able to meet the current demand, which is growing significantly, not just in South Africa, but in the region. Now, your report mentions South Africa's significant renewable energy potential, but why is the country still reeling in energy crisis? A number of things. First of all, where we are at the moment, the renewable resources of South Africa cannot provide as much base load as is needed by South Africa to be able to address its economic uh, issues. The country has been significantly reliant on coal till date. And so it's not going to be possible overnight to change the dynamic towards renewables in a very short space of time. So what that means is we need to be able to facilitate much more investment into the renewable space by making sure that a lot of the value chain of the creation of renewable projects is moved into South Africa itself, rather than depending a lot from external providers in that sense. That is going to help, of course, for us to be able to have more renewable, pro renewable projects going. But also, very important, the amount of time it takes to be able to sanction projects is too long. We need to be able to shorten and remove a lot of red tape, which we see at the moment, to be able to get more of these projects. We need better purchasing power agreements to make sure that it is interesting for investors across the world to be able to come to South Africa and invest. We just need overall a better investment environment to make sure that capital is attracted into the renewable space in South Africa. I think that is key. And of course, the elephant in the room has always been financing these projects. We need to ensure that internally generated capital pools in South Africa also see it as very interesting to be able to invest. Because if you want investors for, to come from outside, these investors are always looking at what internal South African capital is doing. If you cannot attract internal South African capital to be able to invest in these South African projects, or at least a lot of them, then you're going to have a difficulty convincing people from outside to come and invest in. So we really need to look at our operating environment in South Africa to ensure that we can attract them and make sure that people make good returns. Because if they don't make good returns, they're not going to come for the sake of coming. But having said all of this, do you foresee any evolution of South Africa's energy sector over the next five to 10 years? And what role would new technologies and business models play in all of this? Oh, yes, I do. I think there is an urgency of now, which we see. The, uh, you know, the recently declared state of emergency, uh, which is looking at addressing it head on. The recent nomination of an electricity minister in the office of the president. So there is a sense clearly that there is an urgency of now in terms of addressing this, this problem. So 
Uh, what I am hoping, of course, is that this would lead to concerted efforts and really addressing some of the challenges that we have seen of recent in terms of capital, of course, but also in terms of things like planning permissions for new investments. We need to double down on coal. I'm sorry for all of those who are running away from coal. I agree that we need to look at reduced emissions. But in the moment, at the moment, we're looking in the short term at saying, if at all we want to address the issues that we see, we need to double down on coal and we need to make sure that we get a lot more gas on stream in South Africa to reduce emissions and reduce the usage of coal, but then at the same time be able to ensure that we get more power into the grid pretty quickly. Hmm. But uh, how can South Africa create more room for private sector investors in the power industry in order to encourage greater competition and collaborations? I think it is really key here to encourage those who are already making great strides to access more gas. We're talking about companies like Renegen. We're talking about companies like Kinetico. This is small companies in South Africa who are already pushing to do onshore gas development. We need to encourage them. We need to stop blocking the acquisition of seismic offshore. This is what you need to be able to drill for gas. You cannot want to drill and access gas and at the same time, you are blocking the access to seismic acquisition. You need seismic to be able to access gas. If you want to reduce emissions in South Africa, it means you want to reduce the usage of coal. Now, gas is cleaner than coal in terms of emissions. And so guess what? We need to be able to encourage more exploration in South Africa. And we as the chamber continue to push for much more exploration. We need the operating environment, the legal environment, to enable companies, big majors from outside, or even smaller companies, including South African companies, to be able to drive exploration within South Africa and ensure that there is more gas to be able to power stations. Right. Now, how can African countries balance the need for economic growth and development with, um, with con concerns around climate change and environmental sustainability? Well, uh, I, I, I hear this question a lot. It's a very good question. But we have to be honest uh, to ourselves in Africa and to say we need to offer people power first. We need to offer people energy first. We at the Chamber have a mandate to end energy poverty in Africa by 2030. That is not going to change if at all we don't invest significantly in power. And sometimes that might mean emissions, but we need to do it because we have a significantly growing youthful population. We have a significant amount of women and, and children without any kind of access to clean cooking fuels. That is 900 women at the moment and children and, and, and others in African continent. And so that should remain priority for us in Africa. We have less than 3% of the emissions, which are global emissions in that sense. So uh, if you ask me and if you ask uh, many of our members of the chamber, the focus needs to be providing people with power in as much as we do agree and believe that emissions need to reduce going forward. But I, I, I would to likely say, you know, we need to address those countries that have significant amounts of pollution per head. And that is certainly not in Africa. Now, let's talk briefly about what is on the agenda of engagements for the current year at the African Energy Chamber. Please take us through that. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I need to say that we at the Chamber have a mandate to reduce energy poverty or at best even end it by 2030. We have 600 million Africans without any kind of access to power. We have 900 million of them without access to clean cooking fuels, like I said earlier, that remains our priority. So what that means is that this year, we are going to be pushing significantly for more drilling on the African continent to be able to ensure that we can access much more natural gas. That will mean that we can uh, push forward to building more stations and be able to use gas uh, in industries. 
Our people need jobs. There is no way we can guarantee those jobs without access to reliable and affordable energy. So that is going to continue being a priority. This year as well, the Chamber has launched a number of initiatives to increase the amount of women in the sector because we do believe that the more women we can have into the energy sector, the better it is for the sector in terms of its long-term viability. Uh, finally, one of the really key things for us is actually encouraging local African companies to play a bigger role in the acquisition, not just of seismic, but then going into drilling and being able to be part of the value chain of the provision of energy. That might not be possible sometimes just when it's happening with one country. In that case, we are really pushing for countries to look at together approaching all of these infrastructure projects. There is no reason why South Africa should not be talking to Mozambique to build pipelines, to be able to access gas in Mozambique, to be able to access gas in Namibia. It doesn't have to be that it's just one country on their own. Countries in Africa need to work together to be able to share knowledge, resources, and to be able to share the burden in terms of uh, the financial burden that you need to develop these projects to make sure that these projects are commercially viable and can be sustainable long-term. Quite a lot there on the table. And thank you so much, Vena Ayukegba, Senior Vice President at the African Energy Chamber, and for that overview of South Africa's energy sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Justina, for having me. We would be talking about this and a lot more uh, during Africa Energy Week 16th to the 20th of October 2023 in Cape Town. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and a lot more of your viewers. Thank you very much. Yes, we're looking forward to that event. That's it on your quick chat this week. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I am Justina Okechuku. Bye for now.